Good afternoon and welcome to Omni Bros Live. I am Omni Doc from Omni Dog's Vault, joined as always by Infinity Watch, Gabe Infinity Watch. Gabe, how's it going? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? Good, good. Hanging in there. Yeah. How many people did you have to ban over the weekend? <laughs> over the weekend, so far none, but I, I had a rough Friday. A rough Thursday is what I had. Um, but uh, so far, here's a weekend geekdoms. Geo, how's it going, buddy? Doing pretty well. How about yourselves, guys? Good. Happy Everything's here. good. I um, was charging my MacBook. Ah, Don't nice. tell anybody. <laughs> Nobody just, will ever know. <laughs> you just told everybody. Oops. Yeah, um, I uh, I didn't have to ban anybody um, since then. I just couldn't get over that I, in my post about not spoiling anything, somebody put a spoiler in that post, and I had to go in and ban that guy. That ri really ruffled my feathers, That and that part got spoiled for me. Yeah. So, so word to the chat, please don't put in any spoilers. Not everybody's seen Endgame yet, so please no spoilers for Endgame. Uh, peace and love, peace and love. No spoilers for Endgame, please. Yeah, we will not be talking about Endgame details really at all during this uh, show. So everybody's safe. Right. Except for when I, mean, I tell everybody how uh, Batman and Joker showed up and saved the day at the end. Yeah, of the right. It's funny. Right as we were um, uh, coming on, I just got a CNN bulletin that says Avengers Endgame shatters records with $1.2 billion opening. Called wow. it. Uh, it did an estimated $350 million domestically. I thought it would be more than that, but it made $300 Philly, $300 Philly, $300 Philly dollars, um <laughs> domestically and $1.2 billion um, internationally and domestically. That is pretty freaking incredible to set a world record. It is now uh, the number one opening weekend ever overall. Oh, yeah. I mean, I called it earlier. That was something I said, that if any movie was going to open at a billion dollars plus, it was going to be Endgame. Can you tell me, this cracks me up, what the record for the biggest opening weekend internationally was before it? Uh, I, I have uh, to look it up, but not off the top of my head. There's no way. The Fate of the Furious. Ah. Oh, that's right. I remember reading something about that. That's that's odd. Those movies <laughs> must do really great over. I can't believe how good those movies do, like in China. And I think like you that. must be right. I yeah. I, I never would have guessed that. Um. Yeah, that is incredible. One point two billion. I don't know. More incredible to me is the Fate of the Furious was the previous record holder. I have to say, I've never seen any of those movies. Oh man, those movies are great. <laughs> <laughs> like they're not like you know you're not gonna you know finish watching those movies and have like a new outlook on life or you know it's gonna change your world or world views or, or become woke or anything like that but you're gonna walk woke. out of those movies and be like man that was fun that guy that guy <laughs> crashed a, a, a car into like a submarine so i didn't get more and more over the topic like the first movie is literally very just street level it's all about just racing and guys stealing like VCRs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and then it escalates into like international crime and Interpol and guys crashing airplanes and or crashing cars into submarines, and uh, Wonder Woman's in it. And oh, which one's she in? in it. She's in like the last like two or three. Like she's this one part where she was in. They yeah yeah. Like right? there's a scheme. It's very later on. It gets very Ocean's Eleven. Uh, Ocean's Eleven. But there's a part where they use her her butt literally to uh, to get somebody's handprint that they need to open up like a safe or something like that. So well, I like the sound of that already. Yeah, she's in a bikini and the guy touches her butt and then they they get his handprint and that's how they save the day. Okay, now why has no one ever told me Wonder Woman's in a bikini in a movie? Well, now's your chance to go see it, Jess. Holy criminy! Yeah, she's she's really hot in it too, like super hot. Yeah, yeah. Not that she isn't as Wonder Woman, but there's like a you know, seeing her in like everyday kind of outfits, and yeah, she's hot. 
Okay, I am. Uh, I will go to IMDb after this, see which one she's in, and I will. Uh, I'll watch it with my daughter. Sure, just watch all of them. <laughs> the first one is really good. The second one's kind of all right. I really like Tokyo Drift. Uh, and then after that, I kind of, I kind of get confused on which one is which. They start kind of blurring together after a while. Huh. But sooner or later, there's going to be like. You know, the same like horror movies or anything like that, where it's like Leprechaun and then Leprechaun in space. And then the way to top Leprechaun in space is Leprechaun in the hood. So eventually they're going to they're, they're gonna land in space. They're going to do some kind of space <laughs> eventually. And then to top that, there's going to be them back in the hood again. Because the first movie is kind of in the hood. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, Geo, right? The, uh, the James Wan, I think, started a franchise, right? Didn't he do the first movie? He did, I think it was uh, Tokyo Drift, if I remember correctly. Well, Chris M. in the chat is saying Tokyo Drift is his favorite movie ever. That's a great movie. It's cool. Little Bow Wow's in it. <laughs> yeah. What is, who is Little Bow Wow? <laughs> he was a, a, he was a rapper in the 90s. A young, like, really young yeah. kid rapper who grew up to uh, to be an actor. And he was on... I don't know. It's a. It was a BET's version of like uh, TRL Live or whatever, like the, the talk show, video show kind of thing. And this is just recently that he was embezzling money from that show to pay off his child support. Wait, this is real or that was a show? No, that was real. <laughs> oh dear, little bow wow. Yeah, going into the old stony lonesome. <laughs> He did, uh, James Wan did Furious 7. That was the one that made like a billion dollars. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, so Endgame makes the numbers that Gabe thought it would and didn't make the number domestically I thought it would. I thought it would be even higher, but that's still a pretty incredible opening. Well, we can not over yet. We still have today. Well, that's true. I thought it's it would make five hundred domestically. Three three hundred and fifty million is is nothing to scoff at. No, I thought it was going to make five hundred. That's close. I mean, it it, it topped itself. <laughs> uh, yeah, Infinity War was like two hundred and fifty seven million. Yeah, and we were amazed at those numbers. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, theaters in my area were open twenty four hours. I can't imagine going to see it at 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. No, As no, Gabe no. said in the chat earlier, those are crackhead hours. It is crackhead hours. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, just imagine those. Uh, I worked in a the movie theater before, but I can just imagine those poor kids having to work, you know, 2 a.m., 4 a.m. shifts. I don't know. It's even legal in some states. I I don't know. Um. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Oh. Don't eat popcorn and drink soda at two o'clock in the morning. You're going to regret that. Well, I didn't drink anything. I, I had a 9.30 a.m. showing. I had one cup of coffee at 6 a.m. and then I was dehydrated for the rest of the time because I did not want to get up and miss anything. And I didn't. I got up once. And it was, it was a part where I was like, oh, okay, I know, I know what's going to happen here. I'm not going to miss anything. And then I came back and everything changed. I go, God, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> See, you don't want to do that. Yeah, I didn't have no, to go at I also didn't want to, I didn't want to piss my pants in a room full of customers and friends. Yeah, I didn't want to. Again. I didn't have to go at all, fortunately. And I will say the three hours went by pretty fast. I was not, I didn't think that film dragged at all. Yeah, it was pretty fast paced. Yeah. Um, okay, so we covered Avengers box office, and what else do we have to talk about? Uh, we have the Eisners. We uh, got the came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'll do this as you guys talk about it. I'll put the link to Newsarama with the announcement Thank of you. the Eisner nominations in the chat. Okay. Actually, I don't, even, I don't even have YouTube open yet. Give me a second. So that way everybody who's watching can kind of, you know, fact check us or whatever. You know, we got a lot of fact checkers in the chat sometimes. 
<laughs> do do do. Ah, oh, that's the wrong one. Wait, that's stupid. Sorry. <laughs> I put it in our chat. I'm an I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, while I'm doing this, Jess, how about you do the uh, the sponsorship spot? Oh, frick! I forgot our fabulous sponsor. We couldn't do anything without them. Thank you, Gabe. InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add an extra 2% to that. Uh, every quarter, there's an Omnibros Live discount code. Um, over fifty dollars in the United States in an order gets you free shipping, fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging, which I just reused uh, a lot of it this weekend because I'm selling some books, so I just reused that fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. You you know what? It's awesome because. I don't think we really put this in the in the spot as much, but yeah, you, you get up to fifty percent off new releases the week of. That's crazy. You're not going to get that anywhere else. Well, yeah, and then normally you just get forty two percent off, which is crazy. I oh, know mm -hmm. you're not going to get that anywhere else either. I mean, you have to quote settle for forty two percent off. What's not fifty percent off? That's still amazing. Yeah, it's funny because you know. Like in the Facebook group and stuff, it's like, oh, well, such and such is only 42% off. Uh, <laughs> no. Maybe I'll wait. You know, I'm like, what are you talking about? 8%? You know, sorry, you got to spend that extra dollar and a half or whatever it might be. Yeah, 42% off is amazing. It's a great, yeah, it's a great discount. Yeah, get that anywhere else. I mean, and this is coming from somebody who, you know, runs a local comic book store. I always say, you know, if you can, support your local comic shop. But if you don't have a good one or if you're trying to make ends meet a little bit easier, you, you can't do you can't do better than in stock trades, mm -hmm. especially with their shipping prices and stuff like that too. Yeah. Which free, is like a flat rate for the most part. Free shipping. The free shipping thing is crazy. Yeah. That's over $50 and that's, that's too easy to do $50. <laughs> that's one, that's one omnibus on, you know, yeah. uh, new release week. That's a, that's one Omni easy. Right. Yeah, and even if you don't hit the fifty dollars, I mean, the shipping isn't isn't it's, egregious at all. It's, it's like bucks. four dollars. Yeah. yeah, I think I've had to do that once, where I just had to have something and I couldn't get to fifty dollars, and I said, eh, four dollars, not a big deal." Hmm. Chris M, yeah, I didn't know Chris M lived in Pittsburgh. That's cool. And the only reason I think that's cool is because uh, I watched that cartoonist kayfabe channel with Ed Piscor. And Jim Rugg, and they're from Pittsburgh. And uh, Jim Shooter was from Pittsburgh. Mm. And the only reason I know that, I forgot what comic it was, but when Jim Shooter left Marvel, somebody destroyed Pittsburgh in a comic book. <laughs> just, <laughs> just out of pure spite wow. towards, uh, towards Jim uh -oh. Shooter. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about the Eisners then. Um, actually, I don't have it in front of me, so one of you guys can lead it off and talk about it. All right, I got it up, so let's do this. So Eisners, this is basically the Oscars. If you don't know, this is the Oscars of the comic book industry. Uh, it is given, the awards are given out every year at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's open to the public. You can actually go and like and watch it happen. But it's I've never been to it, but from my understanding, it's a little, you know, it's a little whatever and kind of bland and maybe not the, the biggest ex escapade of an award show because it's just, you know, it's comic book dudes in a room. But this is the top of the line uh, award that is handed out to the industry for the, the, the biggest and the best of the year. And this year, I'll just run through the whole the whole categories. Let's just do that. It doesn't seem to be a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is kind of a whole lot. Holy shit. <laughs> we'll pick the ones that you think will be the most interesting to yeah, us. Yeah, okay. Then. That's going to be a good idea. Let me, let me just scroll through here real quick. Um, so, I mean, here's the categories. You got best short story, 
Uh, nothing on here really kind of stands out. Um, sorry if anybody, any creators out there that might be watching the show and I'm skipping over your name in any of these categories. Again, we don't have five hours to talk about every single part. Uh, so you got best short story. Mm -hmm. You got best single issue one shot. And um, best continuing series. So we can talk about that real quick. So best continuing series, you have Batman by Tom King and mm -hmm. everybody else that works on that book. Black Hammer, Age of Doom by Jeff Lemire. Uh, Gasolina uh, by Sean McKenzie. Giant Days by John Allison. Immortal Hulk by Al Ewing, Joe Bennett, and everybody else. And uh, the new Runaway series. Huh. By Rainbow Rao. I didn't know I didn't know the writer's name was Rainbow and Chris Anka. Uh, best limited series. This one is one I think we talked about in the chat a little bit. You have Batman White Knight, which is all done by Sean Murphy. Mm -hmm. Eternity Girl. Exit Stage Left, The Snagglepuss Chronicles. Mr. Miracle. X-Men Grand Design, Second Generation. That's one that we talked about real quick. Um, I remember I said, I think X-Men Grand Design is the best best out of the bunch due to like it's it's technical prowess and the work and details that's gone into that book uh but batman white knight seems to be the big fan favorite along with mr miracle so i think yeah. those three are going to be the ones slugging out for uh for the award on that one that's the one that's gonna be interesting to me to see what happens and who knows i might just get blindsided maybe eternity girls or exit stage left takes it but to me it's gonna be white knight Mr. Miracle and X-Men Grand Design is going to be the top ones there. Uh, best new series. We got Bitter Root, Crowded, Gideon Falls, Isola, Man Eaters, and Skyward. I think those are all image titles. They are all image titles. They are think, image titles, yeah. I think yeah. I've read them all. Which one of those did you... Uh, do you like then, just since you read all of it? Can, can you go say them again? The Bitter Root, I haven't read. Okay. So, yeah, Bitter Root, um, Crowded. I haven't read that one. I apologize. Uh, Gideon Falls. Uh, yeah, there's my winner. As much That's as I love Sky, Yeah, as much as I love Skyward, Gideon Falls has just grabbed me by the throat and shaken me. I love Skyward, but Gideon Falls is just fantastic. Uh, Isola. Isola, Isola is great. Isola? Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't read. I read like the first issue and like the they did like this uh, free like prelude thing for it. I mean, I only read the first issue and it's it seemed cool, but the artwork in that thing is God. That thing is top notch when it comes down to the artwork yeah. in that book. God, I can't wait for an oversized hard. I'm gonna have to wait, but I really want an oversized hardcover of that book. Yeah, that's gonna look great. Uh, Man Eaters and Skyward. Yeah, Skyward is my really one of my top books. I, need to I keep that. hearing about that book, man. Are you, mm -hmm. you guys are gonna make me have to read it or something? Yeah, it's out in two trades, and the third trade will finish it up. And then the next category is best publication for early readers, which is uh, up to age eight. We don't need to talk about that. Best publication for kids, uh, nine through twelve. Another one that we'll just pass over. Best publication for teens. Man, they really just they really just split in hairs with <laughs> that category, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Uh best humor publication. Best anthology. Um, I'll, I'll I'll give a shout out real quick to best anthology because there is the Where We Live anthology book. Mm. This is the anthology that uh JH Williams and a bunch of other people did that benefited the survivors of the uh, the shooting in Las Vegas. Ah, okay, good. Nice. Best reality-based book? I'm assuming that must be nonfiction? Uh, <laughs> yeah, best nice. graphic album? Uh, there's a few on here. It's uh, Bad Girls, Come Again by Nate Powell. Green Lantern, Earth One, Volume One. I know we talked about that on yeah. the show for a minute. That's good. Uh, homunculus. 
my heroes have always been junkies. Ah, oh, I just finished that. It's awesome. Yeah, that's that's probably going to take the prize right there. And uh, Sabrina. Then there's best graphic album reprint. I'm guessing graphic album must just be like graphic novel or something. That's yeah, odd that's how right. they kind of use that term. Mm -hmm. uh, best adaptation from a, another medium. Best U.S. edition of international material. Best U.S. edition of international material. See, this is the kind of stuff that this is like the uh, uh, the best sound editing categories. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for the Oscars, or everyone's like, yeah, all right, whatever. We, they don't even televise that kind of stuff. Uh, best archival collection projects or strips. I'm just cruising through there. So there's anything here that stands out that we might have talked about. Um, best archival collection project slash comic books. Best writer. All right. So best writer. We'll do. So we have Alex yeah. DeCampi, who did Bad Girls, uh, and Twisted Romance. Tom King oh, scored wow. another nomination. This is his third one so far, I think. Uh, for his work on Batman, Mr. Miracle, Heroes in Crisis, which got him death threats. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna have to re I can't wait till that comes out in collected form so I can read that and see what everybody's kvetching about. Yeah, I think I have an idea what it is. Um, yeah, I'm going to just grab the issues from the store and see if I can just read it real quick. And then Swamp Thing Winter Special. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, he wrote that, yeah. Yeah, that was a cool book, too. Uh, so Jeff Lemire is getting nominated for Black Hammer, Age of Doom, Doctor Star, and the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows. Is that a part of the Black Hammer like universe, that Doctor Star? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Doctor Star was great. Oh, and he's also getting, well, he got extra lines. Uh, so Quantum Age, Descender, Gideon Falls, and Royal City. Oh, yeah, that guy's lot. busy. And <laughs> Seriously. And, it's, and the only thing that he's ever written that I didn't like was Plutona, and he's written about 25 different things, and I love them. Let me just say that guy to be able to pump out so much material. And it's all quality. Scott LaFleche, I'll, I'm in the Facebook group. I'll take a look at your application and try and take care of you. Okay. I told you guys, let me be an Sorry. admin. I would, just, I would just flip a coin and see who gets in. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be the anti Jess and just just say no to everybody. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have, and then after Jeff Lemire, we got Muck, uh, Muck, Mark Russell for Exit Stage Left, The Snagapus Chronicles, Green Lantern, Huckleberry Hound, Lex Luthor, Porky Pig, and Lone Ranger. He's great. Uh, yeah, our girl Kelly Thompson. Oh, she's for, great. Yeah, for Nancy Drew, Hawkeye. Jessica Jones, Mr. and Mrs. X, which I really need to check out because oh, so I think good. it was you and Omar were both just climbing up the walls about it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Rogan Gambit, Uncanny X-Men, and the uh, newly canceled West Coast Avengers. I know. I need to read that when it comes out in collected form. And then we got uh, Chip Zdarsky for Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man, and the Marvel 2-in-1. Which uh, Faria from the Fangirls was raving about. Yeah. In the group. Um, so then we got Best Writer slash Artist. We got Sophie Campbell for Wet Moon. That's an old book, I thought. Isn't Wet Moon like really old? Uh, Nick. Oh, this is a difficult name. Uh, soft spell. It's D R N A S O. Who's a writer for Sabrina? Uh, David Lapham, one of my all-time favorites for Lodger and Stray Bullets. Nate Powell, Tony Sandoval for White Snakes. Oh, I'm sorry, Water Snakes. I got my uh, my heavy metal mixed in there. Uh, and Jin Wang from The Prince and the Dressmaker. Next category is Best Penciler. Inker or penciler inker team. Uh, Mattis Bergarda for Coda. The great Mitch, uh, Mitch Garrett for Mr. Miracle. So Mr. Miracle is really racking up the nominations this year. Mm -hmm. that, that stuff is beautiful. I know most people out there has probably already checked out Mr. Miracle already. His work is great. 
another person whose work is awesome that I was raving about earlier, and that's Carl Kershaw for uh, Isola. Uh, Sunny Lou for Eternity Girl. Sean Phillips for Killer Be Killed, and my heroes have always been Junkies. And Yannick Paquette for Wonder Woman Earth 1 Volume 2. We got Best Painter, Multimedia Artist, uh, and then Best Cover Artist. Mm. Best Cover Artist is uh, Jim, Jim Bartow for Blackbird. Those are beautiful covers. Submerged, Nick Darrington for Mr. Miracle, Carl Kershaw again for Isola, Joshua Middleton for all of his variants he did for Batgirl and Aquaman that I, I can't keep on the shelf. And uh, Julian Tedesco for Hawkeye, Life of Captain Marvel. Best coloring, I think we probably just cruise through that. Best lettering, <laughs> we probably cruise through that. I'm sorry, but uh, best lettering, that I, I, I can't tell good lettering from bad lettering at all. Unless it's really, really bad, like where it doesn't fit in the balloons the right way or, or, or something like that. Like yeah. I... Monster something. I have a really hard time. The same with like best editing in a movie. Like I can't determine good or bad editing in a movie. Uh, best comic related periodical or journalism. Oh wow! Bleeding Cool's not on that. No. <laughs> oh. um, best comics related book. Best Academy Scholar Scholar uh, Scholarier work. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Best publication design, uh, best digital comic, and best web comic. So those are the categories, and we kind of just touched on the highlights. Cool for all of these. So, I guess big shout out to uh, Tom King. Yeah, he got a lot. Yeah, he's 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 racking it up. Shout out to uh, Jeff Lemire. He got a lot. Mm -hmm. Mitch Garrett's got a couple in there, and the team of uh, Isola. And me, I'm, I'm really pumped to see that that X Men Grand Design is on here because, man, that is such a cool book. If no one's out there, if no one's checked it out yet, if you're a fan of Chris Claremont's X Men, that's a book that you really, really need to check out. It is basically, if the X Men were real people, this would be like an autobiography of the X Men. Yeah. As someone who doesn't know 100% about the X Men, I would put my knowledge of the X Men at about. 70 percent uh, and that's probably generous i still dug the heck out of those books they were really good yeah ed piscor is cool he's the uh the other guy he's a part of that cartoonist kayfabe but i've been following him and his work for a little bit uh he did this uh hip-hop family tree yeah. comic series which is really really cool and really interesting that details the uh uh, the beginnings and the ups and downs and the dark and the good and the craziness of the hip hop industry from like the seventies to like the mid eighties. So really cool stuff in there. And that's it. So, uh, these, like I said, this is be a San Diego comic con when these, uh, awards will go out. So good luck to everybody. Are you going to San Diego this year? I know we will be there, but I'm not, 100% positive if I will be there. Okay. I probably will be. I hope I am. San Diego is a fun time, a fun show, and just a fun town in San Diego. And uh, that's the one where I run to a lot of friends. And, that's cool. And, and fans of the show from last year, I remember. I ran to a lot of fans from uh, going to C2E2 and WonderCon this year, too. A lot of fans of this show? Of the show, of the show, yeah. Wow. That's cool. cool. Um, yep. It had whoops. Where'd Gabe go? He dropped. Maybe he clicked. Oh, oh, there we there go. he is. Sorry, okay. I, I had two windows open, two Google Hangouts open. I closed the wrong one. Oh. Um. Yeah, that's always cool when you're recognized. Yeah. Well, it's cool because you actually kind of get to put you know you know faces to to the names. Um, a lot of people that are just you know I ran into like John Hahn. Oh and yeah, he's and, great. And this kid, he's a great guy. And just a lot of people you run into. A lot of people where you're like, I remember your name. I didn't know, you know, or a lot of people who are like, I watch the show all the time. I just don't watch it live or I don't pop into the chat. And, yeah. and you know, still they're out there uh, 
they recognize me and they're, they're there and show support. So it's always fun. Yeah. I remember at Baltimore last year when I ran into um, this family from England who recognized me. Hey, there's Omni dog. Wow. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm like, what? <laughs> what, what, what I have their actually I still have their name written down. I gave them a shout out after the uh after the I ran into them and <laughs> this is my son, this is my daughter, we watch you all the time. I'm like That's really? Awesome. They were from Britain. And I'm like, you watch me from Britain? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wow. That was really amazing. I'd imagine it's a very humbling thing, you know, like somebody watches our videos. That's kind of weird and creepy and awesome at the same time. Well, uh, cool it was awesome. Is... It was really awesome. I was oh. so excited that somebody recognized me from the show and they watched this show and my own channel. So they were, they were, I was really excited to meet them. Oh yeah. I get that too. Was I, you know, they watch this show, you know, they, they watch my videos on my channel and they, and they follow torpedo comics as well. So it's like this whole kind of just circle of everything. It was, and the, it's cool. It was because, the Forster family, the Forsters. Because <laughs> we have we have fans, but all we are, are fans ourselves. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and then I was standing here. I got a big of an ego deflation. I was standing in line, and a guy came up and he goes, "Hey, you're Omni Dog, right?" And I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Hey, have you seen Omar? Omar, he, I like Omar. He's got his own channel. I think I need to go find him." I'm like. Yeah, I've got my own channel too. Uh, 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 runs uh -huh. off to find Omar. <laughs> he gets all the fans. Yeah, I wasn't trying very hard, Thomas Judge. I could do a rocking British accent. Stop that. I was wasn't trying my hardest. It's early still for me. I had a terrible night's sleep. Uh, real quick, uh, make havoc. Uh, be careful with the Mr. Miracle hardcover. It's a standard size hardcover. If you, oh, it uh, is. It's a standard. Uh, yeah, I think they we, they they were talking about that in the group. That which, is, which which kind of it's kind of lame. Yeah, the cover looks amazing though. Yeah. It was that and something else. Was it? Oh, it was uh, Batman White, White, White Knight. Knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that going to be standard size too? Yeah. Yep. What the hell? <laughs> Those deserve deluxes like nobody's business. Well, especially yeah. with you know the uh, the trade just came out for Mister Miracle, mm -hmm. and I think it was like that the following weekend or, or something. It was very close to the release of the trade paperback for Mister Miracle that they said, you know what? There's a hardcover coming out that you can only get at comic book stores. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then by the way, it's just standard sized. Wah, wah. And then that's see that's the problem. We talked about this before. That's the problem with DC is they're just shotgunning yeah. these the titles into every single format they could think of, and it's it seems to be the more they do that, the further they go along, the less support each one's going to get. You know, because you somebody already bought it in the trade, and then somebody's already going to buy it in a hardcover, and you're kind of just shrinking your audience each time you have a new release. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I've already gone on so many rants about that. Yeah, I know. It's it's kind of we're just circling ourselves over. Yeah, again. yeah. It's not doing much. Nothing's um, changing. Uh, Geo, you had something you wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the animation department over at Marvel is looking to. <laughs> create more uh, I said in the chat there was a movie but I think they meant like a TV season but they're looking to do more animated stuff and they're looking at the War of the Realms storyline which I thought was pretty fun it's uh, an interesting story that uh, I think blends itself well to like an epic scope of uh, multiple episodes cool it's interesting because there's only like what I think two issues of War of the Realms out now Mm, yeah, two issues and a yeah. couple tie-ins. Like, no, it's it's like it's like twelve tie-ins already. <laughs> oh man. I mean, Marvel doesn't really have a good track record with animation. It, uh, well, they don't. No, I mean, 
they did like the outsourced stuff back in the 90s did great and then in the early 2000s you had like um wolverine and the x-men and spectacular spider-man those were great but now the marvel disney uh created shows uh, in my honest opinion they're pretty terrible <laughs> I, I i don't like any of them hmm. Yeah, like those Disney. Oh, I, was, XDs, I was a little bummed out. Those XD Marvel ones, like the, yeah. the Hulk and the Smash Squad, I think it was called. Yeah, Agents of Smash. Yeah, Agents of Smash. A lot of the, or even like uh, they're like animated movies where DC is top of the line with their animated movies based on comic books. Oh yeah, they got you know, things like like Red Hood, and I think they just did the, Fright the Frightful Five recently. Uh, Flashpoint, all that stuff is top notch. Even like. That Green Lantern CGI series is is incredible, incredible mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, but the Marvel stuff, like Planet Hulk, was very lackluster. You know, the Wolverine versus Hulk, Deadpool versus Hulk, things like that that they've been doing has been just, you know, very memorable. Like not the best stuff out there, really. Yeah, and it, they they tend to look cheap. Like you want good art on that. Same with comic books. They they look pretty cheap. And the story's not that great. The way they translate it into animated form, I don't know. It's very lackluster. I have to agree. Really good awesome show. In the chat. Earth Mightiest Heroes was was really good. Exactly. That was that. I was gonna say just that series alone redeems itself because that was one of my favorite superhero shows of ever. That was awesome. And so you feel like this may renew the effort into making something good. Maybe. I mean, the uh, VP is really interested in it. Hopefully, you know, they, they do a good job on it. Okay. And who knows? Now that they got the Disney app going on, hopefully there's a lot more, uh, especially now that mm -hmm. they have Fox. Yep. Like, please, oh my gosh, please let X-Men the Animated Series be on the app and the Spider-Man Animated Series be on the app. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if they have the rights to it or not. I don't know how that works. Uh, but the tick, all that Fox Kid stuff, I would, I, I hope to, I hope to Galactus or whatever deity out there in the in the universe that they have like Fox Kid stuff on that app on a DC Plus app or DC Plus. I'm sorry, Disney Plus app. Yeah, They're, they are making that uh, What If animated series. It's pretty. It's going to be pretty interesting based on the What If comics. I think the first one they're doing is a uh, is a uh, Peggy Carter as Captain America, right? I think so. Yeah. Because yeah, I remember that comic. It was like some Exiles comic where that happened. It, it blew up. Mm -hmm. Speaking of blowing up comic books, that blew up single issues. Uh, I'm not going to get into any details, but man, because of the Avengers Endgame, a lot of kind of off the radar books have suddenly become like fifty, sixty dollar books out of nowhere. Oh, oh really? Oh yeah. Which one? Uh, I don't want to get into it because it's going to be spoilers. Uh, all right. Gotcha. Oh, okay. I'll get into it. In, I'll, I'll get into it with the chat with you guys later. But yeah. Interesting. Hmm. All right. So you guys want to just do some Q and A as we yeah. chat it up and kind of hang out for a little bit? We got. Mm -hmm. we got sure. All right, guys in the chat. So let's do some Q and A. If you have any questions or, or comments or anything like that, hit us up. Uh, throw it in the chat, and uh, we'll start doing a little bit of Q and A to kind of uh, bring the show down to a little bit of an end. Well, it wasn't a lot to talk about today because of Avengers Endgame kind of really stifled us from really getting into details, stuff like that. But at least we had the Eisner nominations to really talk about. I think Endgame just really just took over the internet in general. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Like nobody's going to launch any kind of news during in-game weekend because this is going to get buried by <laughs> Avengers in-game reactions and box office polls and, and everything like that. So, What have you been up to, Gio? How's everything in uh, Puerto Rico been going? Yeah, it's pretty much more of the same, you know, just uh, trying to survive, hanging out. How come your connection's love... so much better today than it was on Thursday? I have no idea. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was weird. He got a new hamster for the wheel. <laughs> I've been uh, 
maybe a little bit of a, a foreshadowing for everybody watching the show and whatnot. But uh, and somebody just mentioned in the chat just now, uh, man, that dead orbit, that aliens dead orbit is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. Oh, we were gonna give away the IST gift card. I forgot to even. Uh, how'd you know that, Herka Kolbaz? I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't even do that in the chat. I forgot to put that in the chat and the the program uh, oh. the notice. I totally I, forgot to put that in the notice. I think it's because when I did the calendar. I wrote uh, that we were going to do the giveaway on Monday, and then you guys said, no, let's do it Sunday. So I erased part of it, uh, but I didn't update <laughs> with the info on, on today's show. So I don't oh, know how we got it. Okay. <laughs> I said it in an earlier show. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, let's give away the gift card. Let me, um, let me pull up the... Uh, uh, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, new tab. So lucky for everybody watching today, did you today today we're giving away the IST fifty dollar gift card. Right. Okay. Gio, is there a calendar? Is that published somewhere that people see, or is it because you guys mentioned it somewhere else? I, I just wrote a community post with uh, this week's topics, like Sunday, then Monday with the previews, and then Thursday. Uh, end game spoiler discussion. Okay, I totally flaked to put it in the um, uh, the promotion on the omnibus collectors uh, page, but uh, that doesn't matter. the The listener, the viewers are here, so I will take the first twenty five um, people who write in to omnibros live at gmail dot com. Uh, do um, one of you guys want to type that in the chat? Omni Bros already Live, oh, okay. Gabe's already on it. Omni Bros Live at gmail.com. Please, peace and love. Only people who haven't won before. Uh, and I will put your name into a random number generator and we'll pick a random number generator name thing something. Um, and we will pick it totally random and you will win a $50 IST gift card courtesy of IST and Omni Rose Live. And you, it can be international. You just have to pay for shipping, which, you know, if you live in Australia, shipping could be a lot, but it's $50. So, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, uh, me, uh, so there we go. Uh, send in your um, requests uh, and put in uh the email that you use for ist because sometimes it's not the same email that you send in um to me at, at omnibros live at gmail.com make sure you include the email that you use when you uh for your ist account they should just only email us from that account yeah just put your name in and say ist gift card Put, put but, your name, IST yeah. gift card, and your email address that you use for IST. Yeah, only email us with the email that you use for your IST account, just because that makes things a million times easier. Yeah. Yeah. Just and why your... would you? Why would you have multiple accounts unless you're trying to hide something from the wife? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, your name, IST gift card, and hopefully from the. Um, email address that you use for IST, so. No, it's okay, Mr. Awesome. Just, if you already emailed us, then awesome. Thank you for that. We're not gonna make you do it over again. Yeah, no, you don't need to do it over yeah. again. Yeah, that, this is just, that, this is really what just an, an internal discussion between the Omni Bros. Yeah, Freddie Alonzo, <laughs> don't worry about it, it's okay. Yeah, we'll no, but thanks for, uh, thanks for your entry. Yeah, don't worry about it, we'll work We'll just start out. doing that from now on. Just, hey, just email us from that account, so. Because what we do is we just forward that to, to Emily. So it's better if we just forward it that email and not have to worry about is this the right email so just you will just use the right email each time so no worries going forward in a month from now we'll forget and we'll screw it all up again <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that that uh, aliens dead orbit oh that thing is incredible looking it's it's a fast read i haven't finished reading it yet uh it's a really quick read there's not a lot of you know there's really no uh it's all dialogue. There's really not a lot of uh, 
uh, God, I can't think of the other word. In all the like descriptions and stuff like that, uh, or like narration. So all this, all the really like stuff you're reading is just going to be dialogue, and it's really short dialogue. But uh, I'm taking my time going through it just so I can admire all the art. I just that James Stokel guy is incredible. It's a big book too, right? Uh, it's it's a maybe six issues. No, I mean size wise. Oh, size wise, correct. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit larger than your standard deluxe hardcover. It's the same size as anybody has it. Uh, James Stokel's Godzilla uh, Century Century Year War, I think it was called. Same size as that. But man, it's I love that guy's art. He's he's right up there. If anybody doesn't know his art style, it's very like. Jeff Darrell, Art Adams, uh, super detailed. Like, there's a lot of this. This whole story basically takes place. It's like the first Aliens movie. It all takes place on a couple of ships, so it's all like eternal, like mechanical wiring and stuff like that. It's it's great. You really, if you read this thing in like in like 30 minutes, then you're doing yourself a disservice. You're missing the art completely. You really got to just go in there and just kind of just. Examine the stuff in the background, all the details he does on like the piping and the, the mechanics of the ships. Great stuff. And I say that because we'll be doing a review on that book sometime next month as our review copies or our, our monthly review. Unless we put it off for two months like we did with our last review books. <laughs> it happens. I don't think I'll let you guys do it. I'll keep you guys in, in the loop because... I want to talk about some stuff about that book, but I don't want to, you know, give my review on it now. Where I, a, I've only read, you know, probably a couple of issues of it, and b, you guys haven't even had a chance to take a look at it yet. Because I already have, as much as I love the art and, and everything so far, I got a little bit of a complaint when it comes down to the storytelling. Oh, did he write it too? Yeah, he did everything. <laughs> James Stokoe wrote it, he drew it, he colored it. Wow. And he did the lettering on it. He does that for most of his books. He does full control over that stuff. He does everything on it. And I'm kind of falling into a James Stokel, like rabbit hole because I do want to go through that uh, that Godzilla book he did. And it's going to make me want to kind of go back into and read Orkstein again too. Orkstein's about uh, a society of orcs and how they, uh, they chop your wiener off as a currency. <laughs> not joking not joking in the slightest wow okay i'm going to do the randomizer one through how many do we have i don't think we're going to come into a, another movie anytime soon that's going to break uh end games records Yeah, no. It's going to take a while. And the winner is Beto. Beto Rios. Oh, sweet. Hey, Beto, congrats, man. is this the email address that you use for IST, Beto? Are you still in the chat? You won the $50 IST gift card. If you're still in the chat, uh, I assume since I said that multiple times that it probably must be the email that you use but we'll just make sure because we kind of change it up in the middle of the, the discussion <laughs> yes we had a deal no we did not nash villains <laughs> yeah okay good beto you won congratulations if anybody wants to make a deal with me you can always send money to my paypal account at <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is Marvel the End by Starlin worth it? I think I started reading it once, but don't remember anything, says Freddie. What do you think, Gabe? Um, I mean, I'm not sure what he means by worth it, but it's a fun story. I think it's a six-issue arc as well, but it's... that. This is the time... It's, it's an out-of-continuity storyline. So I, I think I had to read that right before Annihilation. Oh, really? Yeah, I think, uh, I know I did. I had to read that and the Thanos redemption story. 
Uh, yeah, yeah Marvel the End, and then that led, and then one other book, and then that led into Annihilation. Yeah, those were writing the recommendations. End, Just what did you yeah, think of Marvel? Infinity the Abyss, end? exactly. Nash Villains, that's exactly what I read. Infinity Abyss and Thanos Redemption, Marvel the End, and that all led into Annihilation. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot. It, uh, it, those three together lead into Annihilation just because it gives you a framework of characters that help with uh, uh, understanding Annihilation and, and, and Conquest and stuff. Yeah, so I liked it. I, I don't know as a one-off how it fits, but in as that trio that Nash Villain's talking about, um, yeah, it works. I don't know how it would be as a standalone book because I read it as as uh, a trio with those. So I think I would do that. And Thanos Redemption's way out of print, so you'd need to read that online. Oh, that's such a good series. That 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 series is definitely a must read if you're going to get into Annihilation because that's really the start of Annihilation. Yeah, that is. That should have been in the Annihilation omnibus, I think. Uh, Batman omnibus that I can read without any knowledge about the DC universe. Nightfall. Uh, I don't know that I disagree with that. Uh, let me take a look at my, my shelf. So I think Nightfall, honestly, I mean, it's three omnibus long for the entire storyline. Yeah. So it's a little, it's a little long winded and it's, it's, there is there, honestly there is a lot of padding in it, uh, but you don't need really any knowledge. And that's one thing I like about Batman. I like when Batman's not a part of or is so heavily connected to mm -hmm. the DC universe at large. Like I don't like it when he hangs out with Justice League or the New Gods and or he starts getting into that kind of stuff. When it's just like a strictly Batman related storyline. That's that's some of the that's when it's really interesting and it's easy to, to jump onto for the most part. So Nightfall, and even more so, it'll probably be a little easier and probably, you know, technically a better read would be the uh, Batman uh, Jeff Loeb and Tim Cell omnibus. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a yeah. good one. And you might want to wait for Snyder's Batman omnibus to come out. I de that's the crazy thing. There aren't that many Batman Omnis out, and he's only an eighty-year-old character. I mean, you can't you can't recommend Batman by Grant Morrison. No, that's uh, too that's too 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 deep. That 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 book is dug deep into the DC universe. And you can't like recommend Club. Batman and Robin Omnibus by Tomasi because that's not um, that's not a print. It's a new one coming out, but yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's. That's if I'm not mistaken. That's Dick Grayson as Batman, right? And that's no, it's, it's Bruce. Oh, is no, it Bruce? Bruce? Yeah, it's New Fifty Two. New Fifty Two. Okay, well, you could recommend that one then. But yeah, I that's think, a light. Yeah, I that's mean, a, uh, sorry, it crosses over later with some Morrison stuff, but the book explains everything. I think. Yeah. And another one, looking at my shelf, it's not heavily batman related but it's 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 batman it's in a world of batman and i think it's a really really great read it's a little it's a little disregarded i don't think it's 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 mentioned en enough out there uh but gotham central oh yeah that one is is easily you don't need to know any knowledge about the dc universe at large because again like i said this is this is a very focused storyline and it's focused on the uh, the Gotham City Police Department. There's very little Batman actually in it, but you do get a lot of Gotham City. You do get uh, Rogue some some members of the Rogues Gallery that show up. It's it's Greg Rucka. It's uh, Ed Brubaker. So yeah, that that thing is top notch. I don't know why it's not mentioned more when it comes down to you know greatness or must reads mm -hmm. um but it's definitely on my list of greatness and must reads 
it's a chunky book too. Like it, it's a pretty thick book. You get a lot of material out of it. It's the whole series. Um, and I think it's like 35 issues and an in, in annual, maybe something like that. But that's definitely a must read. And the, the, the artwork on there by, uh, is it Greg Lark? I can't think of the guy's name. Uh, by notes, Lark is, uh, is, is fantastic too. Yeah, that is a quality book. And if you do kind of want to get a little bit deep, not much into Batman stuff where he's interacting more with the DC universe, but it's not going to be super confusing and rough for you. Uh, it's not an omnibus, but the uh, Batman, the Superman and Batman uh, absolutes are really fun. Oh, those are great too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to get those still. I have them in paperback, but I'm thinking about getting them in absolute size oh it's worth it i mean the oversized art from ed mcginnis and uh i think the second one has uh, carlos pacheco art and michael turner art yeah, yeah. It, it it really pops on the uh, oversized material michael lark there you go thank you other gabe Uh, was Grant Morrison Volume Two canceled or resolicited? Nope. Uh, Nash Villains, you're you're still in the clear. It's just that with solicitations, and this is something we might talk about tomorrow. Uh, with solicitations for omnibus and like high high dollar books like that, they solicit those things about six months in advance, so that DC has a decent idea of what. Uh, what the enthusiasm is for for those kinds of books and to figure out what to print so they solicit those things way way in the future so it, it takes a long time for those books to come out but it has not been canceled as far as we know i think it actually might be coming out pretty soon i mean i can look that up give me a sec you guys continue on i think it's coming out this summer june something I'm gonna log into Diamond real fast and see. Uh, yeah, there should be a volume three. Yeah, it's gonna happen. This is Grant Morrison Batman. I, if they cancel that, then they've really lost touch with with their fan base. That that'd be devastating if they canceled two. Or if they let two go out and then cancel three, it'd be devastating. Because so many people, you know, those books are expensive. And you're going to just cut it off in the middle of the storyline. I mean, I know they've done that with like Unwritten and some other other books like that. But if you do it to like a big omnibus like that, it's going to be, oh, it's going to piss off a lot of people. Uh, Freddie Alonzo, yes, I recommend any Paul Dini Harley, since he created the character, I recommend all collected editions of uh, Harley Quinn by Paul Dini. He writes an excellent Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn and the uh, Gotham City Sirens is a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Going through Diamond, uh, Batman the Arkham Saga Omnibus. You don't need to know any DC universe stuff to, to enjoy that book. That's mainly based on the video games. But they double dip. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me see. Uh, what double dips? I, <laughs> he's saying some of the, uh, well, Batman, Harley and Ivy by Paul Dini. That's a good deluxe. Uh, the Batman Adventures, Mad Love, Paul Dini, that's great. Harley Quinn, the Gotham City Sirens, Omnibus, that has good Paul Dini uh, story in it. Um, let's see, Harley's blocking my way here <laughs> for me to see my Harley books. Um, Harley Loves Joker by Paul Dini. And... Harley uh, and Ivy meet Betty and Veronica it was actually a ton of fun. That's by Paul Dini. Hmm. If you want just a good Paul Dini book that's kind of Batman related, 
but really not. It's more of a. It's it's definitely autobiographical. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I agree. You want to check out Dark Knight. Uh, Knight is uh, N I G H T. Uh, I think it's just a standard size hardcover and a and a trade copy of it out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, DC just touching all the formats again for something they really didn't need to. But it's a beautiful. The art in is beautiful. It's a really touching story of Paul Dini getting mugged, and yeah. really just the uh, the suffering he had to deal with it afterwards. Because he like you know when he got mugged, they they literally broke his face. Uh, so the recovery aspect of it all, and how uh, Batman. This all happened when he was still writing Batman the animated series and Mask of the Phantasm movie, and how Batman kind of. Uh, saved his life or, or you know kind of like put his mind back together but definitely check that out that's awesome i love that book the art in it is from uh, eduardo riso who's the artist from 100 bullets but yeah geo you're right so uh grant morrison uh omnibus volume two the release date of it is 6 19 so june 19th is the release date and that, that was solicited way, way back. The FOC, which is the final date for uh, for stores to to lock in their orders, was uh, December third. So yeah, like I said, it's about six months. They usually solicit those things out about six months. Seventy five bucks too. So it's going to be pretty. Yeah, that's pretty pretty cheap. good price on IST when that releases that week. Mm -hmm. Whether it's fifty percent off or forty-two percent off, whatever it's going to be, but seventy-five bucks is a good price for that omnibus. I think Swamp Thing is going to be coming out about that same time too. Oh, the absolute. Mm -hmm. No, I really want to read that. I still don't know if I'm going to get that. Really. Oh, because you have the hard covers, right? I have the hard covers. Yeah, if I didn't have those, then I would definitely get it. That's probably my most reread book. I think that's a good indication to get absolutes. If like, you really <laughs> love it, oh, no. and you've read it so many times, that's I true. think it's a good indication to upgrade. You know what? I'm wrong. Uh, let me correct that. <laughs> Swamp Thing doesn't come out till October. And the reason that was on my, my radar is because the FOC date for it was was on the 8th, it was just a couple weeks ago. Well, it makes sense for October, for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure Halloween is going to be a, a new cosplay or costume that you're going to see a lot of people doing because of Endgame. <laughs> if you saw the movie, you probably know what I mean. If not, then you'll know what yeah. I mean after you see it. <laughs> That's right, man, because the uh, Swamp Thing, that was the original solicitation was canceled and they resolicited it. So that restarted the clock on that. We've been waiting for that thing forever. God damn it. Same. It's going to be two absolutes, right? What's that? Well, if it ever comes out, it's going to be two absolutes. I don't know. That's Swamp a good question. Thing? Yeah, because this one, the first one collects issues 20 to 34 and the second annual. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure it's going to be two absolutes. I'm not sure how that long that on the more run was. I've never read it. Um, I'm looking one, two, three, four. I'm not counting right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they're probably going to do three per book. Uh, Nash Villains, is the new Alien book a standalone or something that could be put into a big library edition like Fire and Stone, Life and Death? No, it's standalone. It's standalone. It's, it doesn't seem to be like, I haven't read the whole thing yet, so I don't think it's going to continue on to 
a second book or anything. Usually James Stokoe is pretty right on about just complete storylines when he does these kinds of uh, books. Oof. Okay, here's one for oh, you guys boy. to kind of get an idea. <laughs> yeah, oh, me and Justin, I think we're reading the same question here yeah. uh, from Raghab6787. Thanks for the question, man. Is Final Crisis and Infinite Crisis, both Omnis, worth getting for someone who hasn't read much of the work? Uh, I, can't, I can't recommend Final Crisis. Uh, exactly. But I can recommend Infinite Crisis. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But Final Crisis has so much that you need to read ahead of time, and even if you do read it, Final Crisis is still difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you have read all the lead up stuff to it, and there's a lot of lead up stuff to it that you need to read, Infinite Crisis is a lot more straightforward. Um, and and leads into uh, stuff that follows. Um, I, I I would recommend Infinite Crisis more than I would Final Crisis. I mean, people are still wrestling with Final Crisis now. You know whether or not it's readable or not. So <laughs> it so uh, I I would stay away from that personally. I think and, a lot of it touches into the Grant Morrison Batman omnibuses, right? I haven't read the, I haven't read all of that stuff together at once, but I, it is um, Omnipool even said in the chat. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place. It, it bounces between different Omnis and stuff like that. I believe as well. Yeah, it's a lot. It's 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 a, it's, a, it's a, again. I don't like to you know bash on Grant Morrison or anything like that. But one thing that's really good about Grant Morrison is also something that's really difficult about Grant Morrison work is he he is a walk in the encyclopedia of DC history and yeah. he likes to use that knowledge on these uh, on his storylines so it's easy to kind of get lost if you're not like you've not you literally have to have a PhD yeah he pulls DC from so many different reference yeah. points in DC's mm -hmm. history that if if you're not well versed I mean I'm pretty well versed in DC's history and even I struggled with final crisis and yeah I don't know uh, it's, it's the same as a like crisis on infinite earth on infinite earth mm -hmm. you, you you really need to have brush up on a lot of your dc history you have to read it here's what, here's what usually ends up happening for me when i do these types of books like grant morrison stuff is i read it and i go what the hell does all this stuff mean and then you kind of go back and kind of like wikipedia things and then you, you end up reading a, uh, another book here and there and then you go back and read it over again you go okay this is starting to make sense now so there is, it's almost like doing like a, a final term paper. Exactly. It's a lot of research you got to give yourself. Mm -hmm. Of the two, Infinite Crisis is better because even though it's in the middle of the crisis events, it's very accessible. It's very action oriented. Yeah. You need to know just, uh, uh, you need to get your bearings straight, like uh, which character is which and who does this and that and a couple things that happened prior to that but i think the event is a lot more accessible for uh new readers final crisis i mean it's like uh end game you got to watch all of the previous movies to fully enjoy uh the last one so i would re i would leave that alone for a later time that's a good point because i I didn't think that was going to be true about Endgame, but when I watch it, I go, "Yeah, you kind of have to know everything that happened in these movies." You yeah, you really watch do. them all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's see. Maybe it's so I don't forget. Maybe this is a good time for me to just talk about InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off, which is amazing. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. There's every quarter, there's an Omnibros Live discount code. If you live in the United States and place an order over $50, you get free shipping. That's also incredible. 
Incredible customer service, fantastic packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. They're amazing. So Travis Gilmore says that uh, Swamp Thing will be three absolutes. Oh, wow. Uh, that's that's, that's going to be a commitment. Oh, man. Okay. I mean, whatever. Let's do it. I'm willing to try it out because <laughs> It's one of those things where I, I've never been big into DC because it's kind of like how somebody was saying earlier, like the DC universe is very thick and dense and, and lack of a better term, convoluted a lot. So my DC history has always been more of like the Batman universe because it's very you know focused. And I like it when the Batman stuff is focused and it's just kind of singularity into Gotham and, and those characters. And then when he kind of branches out into like Justice League, I don't like it so much. Um, but this is one of those books that I, I never read before and I've heard so much good stuff about it. And I think I'm, I'm ready to kind of get into it. Cause I'm going to try something, something a little bit new. Yeah. And the thing to remember is why it was so groundbreaking is that Swamp Thing was just kind of a interesting character, but written very, he wasn't written that interestingly. He, um, was just dealing with swamp critters and I don't know. It, it was kind of boring. It was just a swamp thing character written very pedestrianly. Uh, and Alan Moore came in and brought in all these wild, interesting concepts and really made swamp thing, you know, the swamp thing we know today with all these incredible concepts and things. And that's what made him so interesting. It, it's, um, uh, you know, he did for Swamp Thing what uh, Frank Miller did for Batman and what Alan Moore did for comic books in general with Watchmen. So it was it was unprecedented at the time for DC to let him do that with a comic. Nice. Yeah, I've only read like a couple issues. I really need to read the whole thing. Yeah. Who's the art? It is Steve Bissett that's mainly on the art for that storyline, right? Or for that uh, I'd have to check. Or Let's I think see. maybe there was some Rick Veach in it. I, I don't know, but yeah. Let me check. Yeah, I think you're right. Because I'm looking on IST and I see those names. Right. So. All right. Well, unless we got more questions in the chat, I think this is going to be good. It's we're we're past the hour mark. Yeah. Yeah, I already gave the IST plug, so I think we're good to go. All right, cool. Well, congratulations to Bethel Reels. Uh, use that fifty dollars wisely. Uh, I will send that to Omar as soon as we get off. Word. All right, everybody. Gio, where can they find you on the interwebs? Oh, you can find me here on YouTube, A Week in Geekdom, where I talk about anime, manga, comics, and everything else in between. That's A Week in Geekdom. And Gabe? You can find me uh, Instagram, Gabe Infinity Watch. And then also, you know what? Give Omni Bros Live a follow on Instagram as well. And you can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and Omnidog's underscore Vault on Instagram. And so for the Omni Bros, I say thank you to the chat. We had a nice day today. Peace and love. Peace and love. All right, everybody.